The world is changing. Sometimes change is exciting, but other times it's terrifying. Robots are exciting because they promise a more efficient and more productive future. People have no idea. This is, this is going to be bigger than the car. But studies show that up to 75 million jobs could be fully automated over the next 10 years. That's nine times the amount of people living in New York City. Talk about terrifying. Want to see how fast automation is really happening and what jobs robots could take first? My name is Alex and I'll show you by looking at the science behind these stocks. Let me set the stage by explaining just how many jobs we're talking about here. Back in 2015, a study at Oxford University showed that automation could eliminate up to 75 million jobs by 2035. That's about 46% of the entire US labor force. That's a scary number, but it doesn't really tell the full story. Robots aren't just about to take half of all jobs and leave it at that. Instead, there are a few kinds of jobs that are at serious risk for disruption. Jobs that are very repetitive, jobs that are mechanically simple, and jobs that are just plain dangerous for humans to do. When it comes down to it, that's the total addressable market for something like a Tesla bot. I, I don't think ma many people have really sort of taken seriously the notion of you know, a, a, a robot at home. I mean, at the, at the start of the computing revolution, you know, Bill Gates said, there's going to be a computer in every home. And people at the time said, yeah, whatever. Right. Who, who would even want that? <laughs> do, yeah, do, now is, we have a computer is, in our pocket. Do, do you think there will be basically, like, in, say, say 2050 or whatever, that, that like a, 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 a robot in most homes is, is what there will be and people yeah, will, will, will I think they probably love will. them and count on them? Uh, you know, the, the, the first units that, that we tend to make are um, for jobs that are dangerous, boring, repetitive, and things that people don't want to do. And, uh, you know, I, I think we'll have like an interesting prototype uh, sometime this year. We, we might have something useful next year, but I think quite likely within at least two years. Initially just selling to businesses, uh, or when, yeah. when do you picture you'll, you'll, sell, you'll start selling them where you can buy your parents one for Christmas or something? I'd say less than 10 years. Let's start with the repetitive and mechanically simple jobs. Those jobs are prime candidates for what's called mechanization, which just means using a machine or a device instead of using your hands. Before we talk about the Tesla bot, it's useful to think about all of the jobs that have already been mechanized. Think about all of the conveyor belts and item pickers and inventory transport robots at Amazon's warehouses. These machines replaced people that were doing jobs like moving packages and parts from point A to point B. As of 2020, Amazon has well over 200,000 robots working in its warehouses, and they come in all shapes and sizes. Mechanization has had a tremendous impact on the entire job market over the last century. Between 1915 and 1960, companies like Ford and the automobile took the number of horses and mules on the streets from about 30 million down to just 3 million. That entire market collapsed by 90%, taking down almost every business that didn't switch to cars. And of course, we're not just talking about animals here. When the tractor was invented, companies like John Deere caused the number of farm workers in the US to dropped from around 10 million in 1950 to just 3 million in 2000. And that's just from switching to machines that still need human operators. Today, a lot more jobs have been mechanized by companies like John Deere, Caterpillar, and Komatsu. Farmers still need to eat and sleep. So think about the future gains in productivity when a human-shaped robot can replace at least some of them. At this rate, it feels like almost every job in the world will soon be done by machines. But there are actually around 20 million jobs in the agriculture industry right now. They're just no longer at the actual farms. Think about how many new jobs systems like tractors and harvesters have created. Jobs in research, design, engineering, testing, production, delivery, maintenance, sales, marketing, the list goes on and on. Lately, the problem has been actually to find enough people to fill those jobs. And by the way, these jobs are not that easy to mechanize, which means they won't be too easy for something like a Tesla bot to do down the road. Going back to 1950, it turns out that over 80% of the farming jobs that got lost because of the tractor were unpaid and underpaid family jobs. The simple truth is that machines tend to displace simple, lower-skilled jobs while creating new skills and markets for people to build on top of. But there's actually another silver lining here. Cars can carry much more weight and travel much further than horses. Oh, you already knew that? Well, did you know that the average output of a farm basically tripled, even with only one third of the workers just because of tractors? Three times more output with three times fewer workers means worker productivity actually went up by 9x. That's the power of mechanization. 
But mechanization is just the first step. Now let's talk about automation, since that's the big market shift that everyone's excited about today. Speaking of big market shifts, the sponsor for this episode is Public.com, an investing platform and social network that brings together the best of both worlds. On the investing side, Public is free to use with no account minimum to get started, doesn't charge fees for standard trades, and allows you to buy slices of stocks for as little as $1. The big market shift comes from Public's huge community, where people can trade investment ideas with thousands of other long-term investors. So if you want to check out even more science behind the stocks, come join the thousands of people already following me on public.com. And if you're looking for a new home for your own portfolio, or you just want to see when I make trades in mine, head over to public.com slash ticker symbol you, and you'll receive a free slice of stock worth up to $1,000 when you fund your account. Wait, really? That's awesome. I'll leave a link to that exclusive offer for you in the description below. All right, so if you want to know which industries will be automated in the future, look at which ones are being mechanized today. Let's go back to the tractor example. Recently, John Deere began testing their fully autonomous driverless tractor. For the first time in history, tractors can do the job without any human operator at all, which means something like a Tesla bot wouldn't take this job. This is the same tractor that farmers can already buy today, but with a few small additions. John Deere added stereo cameras to the front and back of their tractors to detect objects and obstacles in their fields. Farmers can then monitor the tractor's progress using a smartphone app, which shows the tractor's planned path, real-time camera data, and even send push notifications for any obstacles they find. Today, farmers are, are hands-free on the steering wheel as they do the job. What we're asking them to do now is take a step out of the cab and go do something else with their time. And ultimately then, the way they'll control the machine, monitor the job, will be through our Operation Center mobile application on a cell device. John Deere's autonomous tractor is being rolled out in 2022, which will allow farmers to go manually operate another machine while their tractors autonomously till their fields. One farmer, two jobs. That's another 50% reduction in human workers on the field, but we still need the farmers. Even with all this mechanization and automation, the farming industry isn't running out of jobs. It's actually still struggling to fill them. The number one issue when I go visit farmers today is labor and finding the people to do the work because it's a seasonal job and more people are moving from rural areas to urban areas. And so there just aren't the people that we need in rural areas to grow the food that we all want to eat. And so it's always been an issue, but over the last 24 months, it's become an even bigger issue to get people that are skilled enough to do the work, to be there uh, to execute it. So this isn't about replacing people, it's about filling a void that's there today. All right, so the kinds of farming jobs a Tesla bot would take are really just the ones where the machine cannot be fully automated. After all, there's no need to put a Tesla bot in a tractor or a car that already drives itself. So what about dangerous jobs? Arc welding, which uses an arc of electricity to melt metals together, comes with real dangers like arc burns and inhaling toxic fumes. Mechanical cutting, grinding, polishing, spray painting, gluing, and sealing. There's no end to these hazardous, tiring, high repetition tasks across every area of manufacturing. There are a lot of limitations when these jobs are done by humans, and almost all of them are solved by switching to robots. The most obvious one is that robots never get tired. They can work 24 hours a day, seven days a week with much less downtime than a human. They can also reliably perform the same task over and over again with a much lower error rate than a human can. They also don't require the same safety equipment like a human does, like helmets, goggles, and gloves. In fact, when you see a big manufacturing robot in a cage, most of the time that's to protect the humans around it, not the robot itself. Since humans are almost always the bottleneck in any manual process, there's a big push to automate these kinds of jobs. Full automation of these manufacturing jobs might happen sooner than we expect, because robots are really productivity platforms, just like people are. And just like your job has best practices, the robotics community is advancing the state of the art in things like motor control, route planning, and object detection. But unlike individual humans, when a big breakthrough happens, all robots are suddenly able to take on many more jobs because they all get that upgrade and gain that new skill. For example, Tesla's cars are robots. 
a breakthrough in route planning or object detection would move Tesla closer to achieving full self-driving on the roads and also full automation inside their factories. And of course, it would also be an upgrade to the Tesla bot down the road. By the way, driving is a dangerous task. Over 30,000 people die every year from motor vehicle accidents in the US alone. That's enough people to fill a small American city. And that's one reason that Elon Musk wants to solve this problem and often talks about solving real world artificial intelligence first. Uh, in, in order to solve uh, full self-driving uh, properly, you actually just, you have to solve real world AI. What are the road networks designed to, to work with? They're designed to work with a biological neural net, our brains, um, and with uh, vision, our eyes. Um, and at the point at which you solve real-world AI for a car, which is really a robot on four wheels, uh, you can then generalize that to a robot on legs as well. Pe people have no idea. This is, this is going to be bigger than the car. Imagine all the tasks that could be automated if robots were able to recognize new objects on the fly. Here's the problem. There's currently a serious risk of over automation. Tesla tried to automate too many processes back when they were ramping up the production of their Model 3. Elon Musk attributed Tesla's initial failures to deliver the Model 3 to overestimating automation and underestimating humans. Humans are adaptable and they can think critically in real time. They're very quick to learn new tasks where robots need to be reconfigured in hardware and in software. Once a process gets too complicated, robots still need to coordinate and cooperate with humans. That's why Tesla solved their Model 3 production issues by reverting back to humans for certain tasks where the robots just couldn't do the job. Okay, let's bring it all together. The 75 million jobs that are in danger are these repetitive, simple and dangerous jobs. The big insight here is that AI gets better and better. Our definition of simple gets bigger and bigger. A lot of jobs become simple to robots if they gain the ability to recognize and interact with new objects without needing to be reprogrammed or physically reconfigured every time. This is the real business case behind the Tesla bot. The unique thing about this humanoid robot is that it's already the right shape to take over the jobs that humans still need to do today. It's not just the unfilled farming jobs or the dangerous manufacturing jobs. What about all of the part picking and packing jobs in Amazon's warehouses that are still a little too complex and varied to be done by a robot? And of course, what about all the other forms of unpaid labor that we have today, just like every farm had before the tractor was invented? What about jobs like folding clothes, grocery shopping and transportation, and cleaning our homes? All of these economic activities start looking pretty simple to a robot that can recognize objects, learn what to do when they see them, and do the task using human-like hands. Another key advantage of being human-shaped is that you can learn by imitating humans. We probably won't need to program the Tesla bot to perform every individual task. It might learn by watching us do the task just like humans learn from each other today. Think about how powerful that could be. We're talking about a humanoid robot that can be taught to play ball by a kid, not just a team of computer scientists. So we've spent the last century mechanizing jobs, and now we're able to automate a good part of those machines. But if we really want the benefits of robots in every job, the answer is to automate the human, not that job. Let me know what you think in the comments. Is that a future worth investing in? Would you still say so if the next job to get automated was yours? There's actually already a company automating a ton of desk jobs. And if you want to know who it is and how far along they are, check out this episode next. And if you feel I've earned it, hit those like and subscribe buttons to let me know that you enjoyed the science behind these stocks. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.